All right, so in example 1.1.13, we're given a parallelogram and we're given vectors for its sides. So according to the picture, we have one side that's V and one side that's W. I want to write the diagonals A and B in terms of the vectors V and W. So this is a bit what came out of the last um, example. In the last example, we were asked to find the length of the diagonals and we just used the fact that we knew the points. But I did mention that we could actually get it from these two vectors. We don't actually need to know the precise points where the parallelogram lies. It just depends on the vectors. So that's why uh, we have this example here, just to show you how to do it in that case. All right, so let's start with A. Here's the picture I have. I'll do it a bit smaller so we have plenty of room. We have V and W. We have a parallelogram. And then the um, remaining item is this vector A. Now, Maybe you remember, maybe you do not, but when we talked about the sum of vectors, there was something called the parallelogram rule. And we're talking about a parallelogram, so that's perfect, um, which state that the sum of V plus W is exactly this diagonal A. Another way to see it is you think, well, to get from here to here, to do the A displacement, I'm going to go along V, so that's V, and then I'm going to keep going along W, so I get V plus W. Remember, this one is W as well. All right, so one of the diagonal is just the sum of the two vectors. Let's look at the other one. Um, so we have V again. We have W again. Now what I want is I want this vector. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not W, it's B. Excellent. All right, so here we have two options. I'll do it first. Um, by just thinking I need to go from here to here. So I'm thinking about displacement. I'm going to start by going along V, but in the opposite direction. So here I'm going to take minus V, and then I'm going to keep going along W. So W I'm traversing in the right direction, in the direction of the arrows, but I'm using minus V. So once I have, let me even erase V, we have it in the original picture. Now I have minus V and W, they're place, place um, tip to tail, and if I add them, well, I get B, I get the third side of the triangle. So B is minus V plus W, so I get W minus V if I want to place it like this. So one of the diagonal is the sum of the vector, the other one is the difference. If I switch V and W, that's like switching the orientation of B, I still get a diagonal. All right, so things like this will often appear when you do geometric proof. I'm going to do one right here. It doesn't involve parallelogram, but you'll find some that do involve parallelogram. So this example is about similar triangles. So I have a triangle that I'll write, that I'll draw right here. So A, B, and C. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. So let A, B, C be a triangle. Done. Let M and N be the midpoints of A and B. All right, so midpoint, halfway, but here I'm going to put M, M is the midpoint of AB, and N is the midpoint of AC. Show that the segment MN, this segment here, is parallel to the segment AC, but half as long. So let me use color. I'm going to use color um, to draw the vectors that I want, that I'm 
care about. All right, so MN is this vector here. And we also care about AC. I want, that's our goal, to show that AMN is parallel. So MN is going to be some constant times AC. That's what parallel means. But I want it to be half as long. So, well, that means half of AC. That's what I want to show in vector form. That is exactly what the last sentence is asking you to do. All right, so that's what I want to show. So if you want, you can write what it is you know. So what we have. So things like writing a goal and writing what you know, those are nice little things to do, especially if you're not sure that your proof works, if you're not 100% certain, writing these things will give you partial marks and it will lead you to the correct solution usually. All right, so what do we know? The main thing we know is that M is halfway. So if I look at this vector MB, that well, it's halfway, so it will be half of AB. And similarly for the other side, the vector, I'm going to draw it as BN. You'll see why in a second, but it doesn't matter. Both are true. So BN is here, MB is here. Second thing we know is BN is a half of BC. That's what we have. All right, so here's my trick. At the start, you're giving a triangle ABC. And you want to go from MN to something about AC. So my trick is try to rewrite MN, um, but not using M and M, so in terms of the original triangle, so in terms of A, B, and C only. So let's start. I have MN. If I don't want to use M and M, if I want to use the triangle, I better start including these vectors. So instead of going from N to N straight across the blue one, I'm going to use the two green arrows. And so MN is equal to MB plus BN. I'm still using M and N, but I'm a bit further along. I have B involved at least. And then I'm going to use this right here. I can replace MB and BN by half of AB because M was the half point and half of BC because N is the halfway mark. Right? We like that one half. I'm going to factor it out using one of the properties, the distributivity of scalar multiplication on vector addition. So I have half of AB plus BC. So I'm very close to where I want to be. I have the half there, and then I just have to worry about AB and BC. Well, let's see. Let me redraw that triangle. If I take AB plus BC, and this is something we've done a few times. I'm going slowly just because I found these are hard at first. So A to B, B to C, well, that's the same thing as A to C, right? You start at A and you end up at C. So this is half of AC.
actually, let me make a bit of room to write my conclusion. Up, sorry about that. Up. I want this to be here so I can write a full sentence that you guys will all be able to see. So MN as a segment, so I'm going to go back to the original question, which is about segment, not vectors, is parallel, because the vector is, the segment is, is parallel to AC, but we can see what the length is, right? This one is half that one, so half as long. Perfect. All right, so this is a perfect solution. Um, you don't need to know right away where you're going. If you're not sure how to start a problem like this, I recommend really trying to write down what your goal is. Partial marks in the worst of case, in the best of case, it's gonna tell you where to go and write what you have. So write in terms of factors what you're given. So this is all translating into the vector world, what the geometry told you up in the question. And don't forget in the end to write a conclusion. That's really, really nice. It reminds the reader what the goal of um, the example was. And again, this is an argument. So like an English argument, if it flows nicely, if it's easy to follow, that's going to be a better answer than somebody that's correct mathematically, but makes it very hard to follow.